All right. Witness your name, please. April May, at your service. I like the people in the back just shake their head. Order, an introduction should not require any reaction from the crowd. The witness will refrain from wanton winking. Yes, your honor. This is not good. She's already captured the heart of every man in this courtroom. Tell us, where were you on the night of September 5th when the murder occurred? I was, like, in my hotel room. I checked in right after lunch. And this hotel is directly across from the Fay & Co. law offices. That's right. Please testify to the court about what you saw. Alright, alright. Ugh. It was like 9 p.m. at night, I looked out at the window. And then, I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. The one attacking her was the mousy little girl sitting in the defendant's chair. Then the woman dodged to one side and ran away. But that girl, she caught up to her and she hit her. Well, that's already kind of... whatever. Then the woman with the long hair, she kind of slumped. The end. That's all I saw. Every little bitsy witsy wink. <laughs> she, she winked. Get her, judge, or your honor. I see. It is remarkably solid testimony. Is it? How does this guy have a, have a job as a... He just, like, agrees with everything. Hmm, yes. Hmm, okay, yes. I don't see any need to trouble the witness any. Wait, your honor. What about my cross-examination? I thought the witness's testimony just now was quite firm. Didn't you? Mr. Wright, I understand you were Miss Maya Fey's understudy, were you not? You must know her techniques well. Her cowardly way of finding tiny faults in perfectly good testimonies. Well, Mr. Wright, will you cross-examine the witness? Yes, I'm doing it. I'll gladly proceed with the cross-examination. If only because I have a feeling Edgeworth doesn't want me to. She has to have some weakness. Very well, you may begin your cross-examination. Alright. Okay, it was like 9 at night, I looked out the window. Why did you do that? Why? Like, why what? Why did you look out the window? Were you expecting to see something? Oh, well... What? That's it? She can't get out of this question that easily. I sort of... You know... I had a feeling. Well, I have a feeling she's trying to avoid the question. Maybe I should press a little hard on this one. Let's see how far I can run with this. Surely you must have had a reason to look out your window at that time of night. I... Mr. Wright, I will not have you badgering my witness. Badgering? You insist on needling her with these trivial questions. I really don't think it should be allowed. <laughs> yeah, stop him! <laughs> the poor girl! <laughs> Mr. Wright, you have been warned. Poor girl. What about poor me? You looked out the window, what did you see next? And then I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. The woman with long hair was Mia Fey. Slender, sort of, well, some people might say pretty if that's your thing. Your thing? And the person attacking her? The one attacking her was the mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. How do you know she was... Wait, how do you know she was a defendant? Huh? Well, you know. She had a girlish physique. Women know these things. Look, I just know, okay? There's only one person at the scene of the crime with a short, girlish figure. The testimony is bulletproof, Your Honor. He's right. I question it. Hold on a minute. That testament <laughs> stinks! Miss May, I'm willing to bet that... You're lying! <laughs> if I get to use that twice... <laughs> um... Hmm... I'm willing to bet that... Well, this is hard, because, like, it's either you saw nothing or you're lying, which you're lying would also imply that she also saw nothing. I'm just gonna pick your lying. Are you telling the truth? Did you really see the defendant? 
Unless they're just like both doing the same thing. What's the meaning of this? Yes, what's the meaning? Somebody please tell me because I'm clueless about this. I mean, I feel like I gotta save. I gotta, I gotta safety save. <laughs> My cowardly safety save. Ugh. What's the meaning? Somebody tell me because I'm clueless about this. Okay. If you had really witnessed my client, Maya Fey, you would have noticed her clothes before noticing her physique. No one wears clothes like this on a daily basis except her. And I'm no expert on fashion, but her hairdo looks far from normal to me. However, the witness's testimony mentions neither of these things. The testimony is bogus. Still, we don't know if she was dressed that way on the night of the murder. She was, Your Honor. I saw her, and so did Detective Gumshoe. What do you say to that, Miss May? Wow. <laughs> 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 what are you trying to say, you mean lawyer? I saw what I saw. I just didn't think all the trifling little details were necessary. Miss May, the court would like to remind you to please omit nothing in your testimony. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Your testimony again, if you would. I almost had her. Alright, now she's given another testimony. Alright. I did see everything, I did. The victim, the woman, dodged uh, a f the first attack and ran off to the right. Then the girl in the hippie clothes ran after her. And she hit her with the weapon. I saw it, I did. That, that clock. The kind of statuey clock? The thinker, I think. How would she know that? Well, does the accuracy of my report not startle you? Alright, I know where to get her. Man, Gumshoe was harder than this. What the heck? I only wish you had been so detailed from the beginning. Please begin the cross-examination. I already know where I can get her, Your Honor. I already know. I'm going right for it. After a safety save. <laughs> this is exactly what I did before. <laughs> It's not worth needing to go all the way back. All right, the victim, the woman, okay, blah, 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 blah. She hit her with the head of the weapon. I saw it. That, okay, well, how would she know that it was a clock? Uh, present. Murder weapon looks like a statue, but it's actually a clock. Objection! Ooh, we got silence. Miss May, what you said just now is quite revealing. Revealing? <laughs> Thank. You just said that this statue of the thinker was a clock, but there's no way of knowing that just by looking at it. Another person in much the same position as you recently called this a clock too, and he was found guilty of murder. Order! Miss May, can you explain how you know this was a clock? The witness saw the murder with her own eyes. That's all that's important here. The defense is trying to confuse the issue with trivial concerns. Yes, of course. You will withdraw your question, Mr. Wright. But questions are all I have, Your Honor. And as you may recall, I've caught murderers with these questions before. Well, yeah, only once. <laughs> Objection sustained. You may continue to question the witness. That was close. If he stopped me there, your trial would be over. So, what happens now? What happens now is you answer my question. How did you know it was a clock? That's because I heard it? Yes, I heard it say the time. So you've been to the law offices of Fay and Co. No, I didn't say that. Why would I go there? I heard it from my hotel room. <laughs> the law offices of Fay and Co. where the murder took place is very close to the hotel. She could easily have heard the clock. Well, Mr. Wright, are you satisfied? <laughs> no, Your Honor. I can't give up now. I'm not satisfied because she couldn't have heard it and, she, and it couldn't have rung. Okay, so this is what I was thinking. Genshin Impact does this too, where it's like, it doesn't matter what you choose, it's the same thing. She couldn't have heard it because it couldn't have rung. You were at the hotel. There's no way you could have heard the clock go off in the building next door. You have proof that she could not? Amateurs. Amateurs. Listen to me, Mr. Wright. In the courtroom, proof is everything. Without it, you have nothing. You are nothing. And I would like to propose a test to see if she really could have heard it. And why would we do that? 
The prosecution denies your request. On what grounds? This is a trivial matter with no direct bearing on the case at hand. Indeed, objection sustained. Time to switch directions quick. Ready to proceed, Mr. Wright? No, Your Honor. I can't give up now. I'm not satisfied because it couldn't have rung. Oh, I guess it just... Okay, I guess they actually did mean two different things. See how vague it was? Because it was like, that's the same thing. She couldn't have heard it because it couldn't have rung. Right? So you see how vague? I don't know. Your Honor, remember uh, members of the court. It is inconceivable that the clock in question rang. It's empty. That clock is missing. It's no, 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 not its clockwork. What? Oh. <laughs> okay, so it actually. Okay, I picked the wrong thing. It, it was empty. I thought she removed the batteries and put the the note inside where the um the batteries were. Okay, so let's see. What is it this time? Uh, it's a clock. It's made to statue. Thinking it, it, I should probably. It's the the clock isn't talking right now. It's not working. I had to make the, take the clock work out. This paper's inside instead. Okay, so it actually was. I I failed successfully. <laughs> see anything interesting, Your Honor? It's as the defense says. This clock is missing its clockwork. It's quite empty. Mr. Wright, would you care to explain to the court? Oh, maybe it didn't have batteries at all. It just had clockwork. It is as you can see. The clock was empty. It couldn't have rung. Therefore, this witness is a big fat liar. <laughs> fat? Well, Miss May? Uh oh. Why a show you put on for us, Mr. Wright? He knew the clock was empty. Somehow, he knew! I'm afraid you've forgotten one thing, however. Indeed, the clock is empty. As you say, it can't ring. However, we must ask, when was the clockwork removed? If it was after the witness heard the clock, then there is no contradiction. That's true, that is a possibility. The clock might have been emptied after she heard it. And that is exactly what happened, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Wright, can you prove that the clockwork, when the clockwork was removed? Impossible, of course. I have proof. Oh, we got him. Wasn't it you who told me proof is everything? Well, I was listening. And now I'll show you the proof you like so much. The evidence that proves when the clockwork was removed is... Take that! Take that! Take a look at this. That's a very cute cell phone. <laughs> Ooh, you have a girly phone. <laughs> Wait, this isn't my phone. Listen. This is the defendant's cell phone, and it contains a recording. A recording of a conversation she had with the victim on the day of the murder. The defendant's cell phone? This wasn't brought to my attention! Perhaps Detective Gunshu overlooked it. The good detective better remember he's up for an evaluation soon. I gotta say, I'm starting to feel bad for the big fella. Let's hear the conversation. So you just want me to hold on to the thinker for you then? If you could. Ah, uh, I should probably tell you, the clock isn't talking right now. It's not working? That's lame. I had to take the clockwork out. Sorry. September 5th, 9.27 a.m. The whole 12 hours before. Your Honor, I think this makes it clear the clockwork was already gone by the time it was recorded. Or this was recorded. Which was well before the witness even arrived at her hotel. Well, Miss May, would you care to explain this to the court? Just how did you know that weapon was a clock? Isn't it obvious? I saw that clock before. Uh, what store was that again? I go to so many. I forgot. So the witness had seen it before, that would make sense. <sighs> how, did, how is he... How is he a judge? Does the defense have any objections? Yes. The witness claims she had seen it before. Just, it's just so I don't need to go back for any reason. This directly contradicts a piece of evidence already submitted to this court. Let's see it. The proof this evidence that will prove the witness had not seen this clock before is the clock itself. 
It's simple. This clock was never in any store. Ever. A friend of mine made that clock. Only two exist in the world, and the one that isn't here is in police custody. Impossible. Everything is sold in stores. Miss May, I think it's high time you went shopping for a better excuse. <laughs> Oh, excuse is not on sale today. Um, he's still going. <laughs> uh oh. Oh, the heart's spinning. Now it's upside down. What the heck? <laughs> What's it to you, porcupine head? That stupid clock doesn't matter, okay? She did it, and she should die for it. Whoa! Whoa! Looks like I got a head of- Whoa! This is a court of law! And the witness will remain calm! <laughs> Silly me. Man, this is- Games of the past, man. <laughs> did I, like, lose it? I guess I did. Scary. Miss May, let me ask. Tell me, how did you know that weapon was a clock? She's still angry. Oh dear. Does the defense have an opinion on this behavior? Okay, this is it. Yes, Your Honor. Allow me to explain how I see the truth of the matter. Miss April May, you knew the weapon was a clock because... Well, neither of these is right. You had heard about it. You held it. This is familiar territory. I'll just use the same approach as with Mary. Miss May held the very clock in her hands. When she used it to strike the victim, what else? What's the meaning of this? Well, she called at 9 though, so she would have had to run all the way back to her apartment. And call within like a minute. And when he struck, the force the impact made the thinker ring. That's when you heard it. No, that doesn't work. What? Truly our work of art, Mr. Wright. What's that supposed to mean? It was you who just proved the thinker was empty. Oh. Of course it wouldn't ring. What's more, the witness has a rock-solid alibi. Miss May, perhaps you could explain to the poor misguided Mr. Wright that you were in the hotel at the time of the murder. She can't prove it. She did it. It would be my pleasure. No way. Yes way, Mr. Lawyer. Didn't the murder take place at 9 at night? That's the exact time I ordered some room service from the hotel bellboy. Incidentally, the bellboy corroborates the witness's story. Where, where is he? She was not at the crime scene, rock solid. Mr. Wright, you just made a serious accusation against a perfectly innocent woman. <laughs> Isn't that what they're all doing though? Sorry, your honor. But if that's the case, then how did she know the thinker was a clock? Your Honor, I figured it out. There is one other way Miss April Ray May could have known it was a clock. One way alone, and I have proof. Then the court will examine your proof. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh man, uh, what, what am I gonna do? I was on a streak. How did, how did the witness know the thinker was a clock? How did she know it was a clock? <laughs> Wait a minute, your honor. Ah. Uh... I don't think it's time for the wiretap yet, though. Oh, wait. No, no, no. See, this is what I mean. I'm like, well, what do I use? Do I use the phone? Or do I use the wiretap? I feel like it would be if I use the phone to show the recording and then they go like, well, then how would she know of the uh, of the conversation between these two on a phone? And then I go, well, it's because she had a wiretap that was found in, in her hotel room and she was tapping the call. You see what I mean? I gotta, I gotta like know the the specific order in which to like, you know, put things out. Ah. So what? Let's try this. I don't think that's it. The defendant's cell phone. Yes, we've seen that already. Take another listen to the conversation between the defendant and the victim. 
What's up? You haven't called in a while. Well, actually, there's something I want you to hold on to for me. Again? What is it this time? It's a clock. It's made to look like that statue, the thinker, and it tells you the time. They do mention the thinker. But how would the witness know of this conversation? Okay, so there we go. I got it. I got it. Do you have proof that she knew of the conversation? Okay, see, see what I mean? It's a specific order that you got to use things in. That... I found this in Miss May's room. Mr. Wright, please explain to the court what this is. Miss April May, you used a wiretap to listen to this conversation. That's how you knew the thinker was a clock. Am I wrong? I... Your Honor, this is ridiculous. Your Honor, look at the witness's face. Does she seem amused to you? The defense demands an answer. <laughs> Witness answer the question, did you tap her phone? Miss May. Shut up, all of you. What gives you the right to talk to me like that? You. You lawyer. <laughs> it's no fair. All of you ganging up on me like that. So I'm the bad girl, is it? Is that it? That did it. The court seen the real Miss April May now. Now to deal the final blow. Hmm. 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 Look, it's uh, I'm just saving us all time, okay? <laughs> Miss May, why did you tap her phone? Answer the question. Yeah, because we already said that she didn't do it or she couldn't have done it. So now we moved on to how does she know it's a phone? Isn't this a murder trial? Isn't tippity tapping or irrelevant? She's saying exactly what Edgeworth wants her to say. Miss May, you were tapping the victim's phone. I hardly call that irrelevant. While this court does not condone the defense tone of voice, of voice, he has a point. Well, Miss May, do you have an explanation for the court? At the time of the murder, I was in my hotel room getting room service. How could I have killed her? If you don't believe me, just ask the bellboy. Well, does the defense have anything else to say? I have to call the bellboy. I don't think that works. Continue examining Miss May. Because there's no, there's no point in continuing to examine her. The defense would like to call the hotel bellboy as a witness. There's something suspicious here, and I'm going to get to the bottom of it. I think you've sunken quite low enough already. I object to calling the bellboy. Why? What's your reason? Because I hold that the wiretapping had nothing to do with the killing. However, if you agree to one condition, I'll consent to calling this witness. Condition? If Miss April May's alibi is not called into question after you examine the bellboy, then you will recognize that Miss April May was not the killer, and thus she is innocent. And thereby, you must also accept the verdict of guilty for Miss Maya Fay. That is my condition. Can you... Can you do that? I don't think so. I think most of the stuff in this game you can't actually do. <laughs> like, like withholding evidence to go like, ha, gotcha. <laughs> Got him. Uh, <laughs> I better find something suspicious in that bellboy's testimony. Otherwise, Maya will be declared guilty on the spot. What should I do? All right, I've got nothing to lose except for everything. Understood, I accept your condition. Cool. You fell right into my trap. See, he just said that out loud. What trap? The court calls the hotel bellboy to the stand. I believe we're ready for the witness to testify. Certainly does look like a bellboy. He's, he's got his tea and everything too. I received your summons in the middle of work, sir. I'm happy to be of service. 
That tea set looks rather heavy, so without further ado, <laughs> the witness may begin this testimony. I like that they acknowledged it. Very good, sir. Very good. I am the head bellboy at the Fine Gatewater Hotel, in business for four generations. I believe I received a call after eight in the evening from our guest, Miss May. She asked for an iced coffee to be brought to her at nine on the dot, sir. I brought it to her at precisely the requested time, of course. And I delivered the iced coffee to our guest, Miss May, herself. I see. The defense may begin the cross-examination. I'm ready. This is it. If I can prove Miss May was involved with the murder now, Maya will be finished. Or if I can't prove. Alright. I am the head bellboy. Fine goat water. Okay, okay. You don't see this. Ah. Alright, okay. Alright, we're ready. Let's press him. Get pressed. What exactly is it you do at the hotel? Why, anything required of me, sir. I check in guest, I check out guest. I clean rooms, I make beds. I even deliver room service, sir. I checked Miss May in person. Yeah, that's a lot of stuff. Are you always so... Grim? Mr. Wright, you will refrain from asking frivolous questions. I believe I received a call after 8 in the evening from our guest, Miss May. Are you sure it was Miss May on the phone? Absolutely, sir. How can you be so certain? I checked Miss May in personally, sir. Not only did I see her in all her stunning radiance, but I also heard her voice. And then I saw them, and I... Uh, well... <laughs> the point being, I remembered her quite well, sir. Yes, and what the... Oh, them. Okay. We know what he's talking about. <laughs> Them. <laughs> she asked for a nice coffee to be brought to her at nine on the dot. I brought it to her. Oh, wait, 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 hey, whoa, hey, whoa, hey, whoa, 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 I forgot to press. Alright. Nine o'clock on the dot, you say? Yes, I confirmed that detail several times. She was watching a program on the TV and wished to drink after she finished, sir. Nine on the dot. Time of the murder. I, I could see wanting to have something after, like, I used to watch shows, like, uh, Saturday morning cartoons, and they ran for, like, uh, 30 minutes each. So, like, 7 o'clock, 7.30, 8 o'clock, or whatever. Usually, like, when it would transition from one show to the next, I'd, like, during that commercial break, I'd, I'd make, make sandwich or whatever. <laughs> I made a whole day out of my Saturdays. <laughs> I brought it to her at precisely the requested time of course. Precisely. Precisely nine then? Precisely. Exactly. And most definitely, sir. 9 p.m. How can you be so sure? Miss May was quite insistent that it be brought then. Oh, bellboy. I'd like, like, iced coffee at exactly nine o'clock. Something like that, sir. Therefore, I knocked on her door at the crack of 9 o'clock. Why would she be so particular about the time? And I delivered the iced coffee to our guest, Miss Maya herself. You are sure it was Miss April May herself? Absolutely, sir. Absolutely. Yes, as in, so very absolutely, sir. It's an endearing mannerism. Uh... <laughs> How come you're so very certain? Well, when I brought the room service, sir, she, the guest, uh, favored me with, um, an embrasier, em embracer, sir. Is that French for embrace? It's French for kiss, sir, but not a French kiss, sir. More of a peck on the cheek. Why would she have done that? I believe perhaps she, up uh, uh, there was a moment, wait. No, no, it's skipping ahead. I think Miss May was up to something. She wanted the bellboy to remember her. It was just skipping ahead. It's still doing it. Wait. Ah, there we go. It was like skipping. What happens if I hold the A button? Finally, you understand. 
Oh, something was going on with the A button. It was just pressing through everything. The bellboy has absolutely no reason to lie. Now, if you have any decency, you will end this rather tedious cross-examination, sir. It was a bit tedious. The witness may leave the stand. I can't let this happen, can I? Wait, please wait. Does the defense have something to add? One last question. Let me ask one last question. Your honor, I must object. This charade of justice, or charade of justice. Do they say charade? Charade. I've, I've heard charade, but I also heard charade. I don't know. Mr. Edgeworth. All right, Mr. Wright, I'll give you one more question. That is all. Okay, this is really it. Now it's my last chance. What do I ask him about? Okay, okay, okay. Boom. Boom. Wait, boom, boom. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Room service check-in. Room service. Hmm. I, I think it's about room service. Because remember, there's the two, uh, the, the two things on the table. Tell me again about room service. Again, sir? Zach, I delivered room service to Miss May, room 303. The guest had requested iced coffee. $18 was the charge, as I recall. I see. $18? Doesn't that seem a bit expensive? Yes, well, iced coffee for two, you know, and we don't skip on the ice, sir. What did he say? What did you say? Ah, oh, or rather quite. Bellboy, tell us the truth now. Was someone else staying in Miss May's room? Objection. I object. That was... Objectionable. <laughs> Objection overruled. The witness will answer the question. Yes, I see. Why did you not mention this in your testimony? Well, sir, you... You didn't ask. That's the sort of thing you're normally supposed to mention. Yes, quite, indeed. It was the, uh, good barista there. Good barista there, Mr. Edgeworth, who... He asked me not to mention it if I was... If I wasn't specifically asked, sir. Ugh. Oh, already tampering, I see. You fool! <laughs> I've done it. I've won. I've won! Miss April May checked into a twin room with a man, correct? Yes, sir. Then, when you brought them room service, you didn't see the man in the room? That's right, sir. Your Honor, we have just learned of another person involved who may have been the murderer. In light of this new fact, I hold that it's impossible to judge the defendant. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Edgeworth? And who, Mr. Wright, who is this other person? Simple. It was... Miss April May, no, the bellboy, the man with Miss May. The man who checked in with Miss May. Your Honor, as has been previously revealed, Miss April May was tapping the victim's phone, yet Miss May herself has an alibi at the time of the murder. However, that does not clear the man that was with her. The bellboy saw no one else in the room at the time of the murder. What a convenient little setup, but it's too late. Too late? I suppose you'd like to know... I suppose you'd like it if it was too late, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you like to know, weather boy? <laughs> After all, it was you who hid the presence of this other man from this court. Upstart. Amateur. These accusations are ludicrous. Enough. The court acknowledges the defense's argument. I expect the prosecution and defense to look into this matter fully. Am I understood? Yes. <laughs> Your Honor. That's all today for the trial of, Ma of Maya Fey. Court is adjourned. All right, so we didn't we didn't solve the case yet, but we at least postponed it. September seventh, two twenty four p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number One. Mr. Wright, you were amazing in there. Really? I think I might be your newest fan. Oh, I was just doing my job, you know. Then again, that other attorney was pretty cool, too. Huh? 
That face of his, with his eyes wide and trembling lips, it sent shivers up my spine. If you say so. So what happens with me? Do I get to go home now? Well, no, I don't think so. Not yet. Yeah, she hasn't been cleared yet. But I got a great lead on today's trial. Oops. I get it. I actually skipped. <laughs> and what happened to Miss May after that, anyway? I heard they arrested her. I guess she's learning her charms won't work everywhere, so they're probably arresting her for the, the wiretapping. She's probably at the detention center now. I may have to go down there later. Anyway, this case is far from closed. Yes, sir. I'm going to find out more about this man. You think he was the one who... Maybe so. Don't worry, I'll find him by tomorrow, I promise. I'm counting on you. As for a full record of April May's testimony, though it might have come in handy in the trial tomorrow. But now that I have it, I'm not so sure. Most of her testimony was all lies. In fact, there's only one part that hasn't been stricken from the record. May testimony added to the court record. The victim dodged an attack, then ran to the right, but she was caught and struck. I don't know how much good this will do me at all now. Anyway, time to hit the pavement and do some investigating. Maya doesn't belong in detention center, and it's up to me to set her free. To be continued.